There's a connection of rider to machine when it comes to riding a motorcycle that does not translate to any other form of transportation. Sure, in a car, you've got the steering wheel, you've got the gas pedal and the brake pedal, but a car is so refined over the years, and it's becoming more so every day, that it's taken the driver out of the picture to a great degree. It's not like the older days of driving a car when the driver shifted through the gears while accelerating or downshifted to the proper gear when approaching a corner so that there was drive in the transmission when they were coming out of a corner. For the most part, driving today is manipulating a few controls, but the car makes a lot of the decisions for us, and as a result, it makes the car more accessible for a larger number of drivers and safer to drive. Now, this is not true for motorcycles. Now, there are DCT motorcycles like my Goldwing in the background, and they've got their place, in my opinion. But when most people think of riding a motorcycle, they think about shifting through the gears, rolling on the throttle, or revving the throttle at a stoplight. A competent motorcycle rider needs to be a master of all of the controls at their disposal. So I thought it'd be a good idea to start a series here on MC Rider, and we'll look at some of the primary controls on the motorcycle. We'll discuss some of the variety of techniques that that particular control can be used for, and some of the misconceptions that we'll find about some of these controls. Now in its simplest form, the clutch engages and disengages power going to the transmission of the motorcycle and ultimately to the rear wheel. So as long as that clutch is fully squeezed in, doesn't matter what's happening over here with the throttle hand, that motorcycle's not gonna go anywhere. In teaching new rider classes, the clutch is one of the biggest hurdles for a rider to master. And this is probably more true today than it has been in history, as there are fewer manual transmission cars out on the road. So many riders come to a new rider class and this is their first exposure ever to a clutch, and that's the one found on the motorcycle. So as we said, if you squeeze that clutch all the way in, it's removing all the power going to the rear wheel. If you fully release that clutch, 100% of the power is going to the rear wheel. Now many riders stop right there and try to treat the clutch as a on-off switch, but the clutch would better be defined as more like a radio volume knob. So squeezing the clutch all the way in, got no power going to the rear wheel, or you've got no volume on the radio knob, as you slowly begin to release that clutch, at some point that clutch gets in the friction zone and you begin to get partial power to that rear wheel. Just like when you turn up the volume on a radio knob, you start to get partial volume until at some point you're at 100% volume. In fact, using the motorcycle with the clutch in the friction zone is the key to shifting smoothly, to starting out smoothly, doing slow speed motorcycle control, like riding slowly, making tight left or right turns, and doing U-turns, among other uses. So the friction zone is an important part of learning to ride and control a motorcycle, especially at slow speeds. There are a few misconceptions when it comes to motorcycle clutch in particular, so let's discuss those. So anyone who's had a father teach them to drive a manual transmission car, mostly talking to people my age, They've heard their father say, well, don't ride the clutch or you'll burn it up. Now this was true in a car, but not so much on a motorcycle. You have to slip the clutch or you have to use it in that friction zone with the clutch partially engaged in order to control a motorcycle at slow speeds. A motorcycle clutch is different from a car's clutch in that the plates of a motorcycle clutch are generally bathed in oil. So they're designed to be ridden in this manner. There are a few older motorcycles, mainly BMWs and Ducatis, that have what's called a dry clutch. They're more like a car's clutch, but even in those situations, on a motorcycle, you still have to use the clutch in the friction zone to control that motorcycle at slower speeds. Now, you wouldn't want to ride across country with the clutch in the friction zone, but practicing on a parking lot, and certainly in everyday riding, it does not damage the clutch to use it in the friction zone it was designed to do that. Now, if you're practicing and you're doing a lot of riding while using the friction zone, it's probably a good idea to ride the motorcycle around the parking lot clutch-free for every you know, few minutes of practice. So say you practice 15 or 20 minutes, then make a few laps around the parking lot, not using the clutch to give it 
time to cool down a little bit, and that'll keep from any overheating issues being a problem. Now, I'd be lying to you if I said that using the clutch in this manner causes zero wear on the clutch plates. So let's talk about that because that's a major hang-up or a common hang-up that I hear riders talk about. Now, the motorcycle was designed to be ridden at slow speeds with the clutch in the friction zone, and it's the only way you can control the motorcycle with any proficiency at slow speeds. So instead of being afraid of putting wear on the clutch, a rider should be more afraid of not being able to control their motorcycle. Besides, there are all kinds of items on a motorcycle that are wear items like a clutch. I've never heard of a rider who routinely uses their feet to stop a motorcycle in order to have less wear on their brake pads. And I've never seen a rider carrying their motorcycle so that they don't put wear on the tires. So why do some riders ride their motorcycle improperly to keep from putting wear on the clutch? You know, motorcycles are meant to be ridden. When you ride them, there are certain items that are wear items, and the clutch is one of them. If you do a lot of slow speed skills practicing, you might need to replace the clutch plates at some point. That's just as normal as replacing the brake pads or the tires when they become warm. So in addition to controlling the power and the amount of power that gets to the rear wheel, the clutch is used to shift up and down through the gears and when coming to a stop. And this leads to another irrational fear that many riders have about using the clutch. Now the proper technique at stopping at a stoplight is to squeeze the clutch, downshift through the gears while stopping, and ultimately stopping the motorcycle in first gear with the clutch squeezed and the bike ready to go. Many riders have the bad habit of shifting into neutral in these situations, and there are usually two reasons why they do so. First, they want to let their clutch hand rest a little bit, you know, because some clutch levers are tighter, the springs are tighter than others, and it does require more force to squeeze the clutch head on those motorcycles, and that can become tiresome at a long stop. Now, I generally don't have a problem with using this under certain circumstances. If you're going to be stopped for an extended period of time, like waiting on a train, where you're going to be sitting there for a while, and you've got at least Two cars, in my opinion, stopped behind you. In that situation, I've slipped the bike into neutral to wait for the train to pass, also letting my hand rest a little bit. But at red lights with traffic moving behind you and approaching you from behind, vehicles changing lanes and et cetera, it's not a time to shift the bike into neutral. You make yourself a target at those situations and one that you cannot get out of the way if you need to. In the vast majority of situations, keeping the bike in gear, watching behind you, and being ready to move out towards your escape route if need be. And you can only do that if the clutch is squeezed and the motorcycle's in first gear. But here's an excuse for not stopping with the clutch fully squeezed and the bike in first gear that's even more problematic. Riders have argued with me tooth and nail that they don't want to wear the clutch out by doing this. Again, we're back to that wear issue on a motorcycle. So let's talk about that again. In the first place, squeezing the clutch lever disengages the clutch plates. So it separates the clutch plates. They're bathed in oil and they're not heating up to any appreciable degree when you're doing this. And other riders will say, well, it puts wear on the clutch springs by doing this. My question to them is, when you come to a stop, do you shift it into neutral and stand up so you're not putting wear on the springs of the suspension or you're not putting wear on the tires? Do you take your hands off the hand grip so that you're not putting extra wear on the grips? Shut the engine off or do you turn the key off so that there's no extra wear on the battery? Well, you get the point. Motorcycles are designed to be ridden and some wear, even though it is minor in the instances of using the clutch at a stop, it just comes with riding the motorcycle that there's gonna be some wear on it. The cost of not being able to get out of the way when some car's approaching you at 40 miles per hour far outweighs the minimal wear that a motorcycle will receive by stopping at a stoplight, keeping the bike in gear, and keeping that clutch lever squeezed. That is the proper technique. So when it comes to the motorcycle clutch, did I leave anything out? Do you still have questions that I didn't address in this video? You can become a member of MC Rider and we'll be having a discussion of this video and every other MC Rider video on the forums. 
You can become a member at mcrider.com slash member. You'll get access to the forums in the field guide with practice exercises that you can practice on your own motorcycle on any open parking lot. Or if you enjoyed this video and you want to see others, head over to mcrider.com slash watch. You'll find every MC Rider video ever released. They'll be in chronological order from the newest to the oldest. You can search by topic or sort the videos by road skills or road strategy or several other topics of interest. I've put a whole lot of work in mcrider.com and the video resources are available there to every viewer free of charge. You can also sign up for the newsletter and I'll send the weekly video right to your inbox. Again, that's free of charge. Till next week, guys, this is Kevin with MC Rider, and I'll see you on the road.